right now I'm at a point where I have a smooth system that allows me to easily and quickly list clothing and shoes on multiple selling platforms. And that's what I'm sharing with you today, a listing and cross-listing tutorial. From start to finish, I'm going to show you how I use List Perfectly to list items and then cross-post them to Poshmark, eBay, and Macari in one go. Let's start by explaining my setup, the apps, and websites I use to create my listings. So first off, I start with a split screen so that I can work with two different windows at the same time. On the left here, I have Poshmark open, and this is where I do most of my research for my listing prices and sometimes my listings and descriptions as well. On this right side, we have List Perfectly, and that is the software I use to store all of my listings, to share them to three selling platforms, and then to delist them once they sell as well. I will leave a tutorial linked in the description as well as a coupon code for 30% off your first month. If you'd like to try it out, use that code to save some money. Another software that I use to create my listings is called TextBlaze, and that lives on top here. Just like List Perfectly, TextBlaze is a software or a Chrome extension, so like an app, but for your computer. It is free to download, and once you install it and create an account, you can go to Dashboard here. And here you can create shortcuts, or as TextBlaze calls them, snippets. Here are some of the snippets I have created. I created some for disclaimers, features, and what is that, accents. We have sizing and fit, material. I even created snippets or shortcuts for my tags that I put at the bottom of each listing. For example, when I have career shoes or a career looking top, this is the snippet that I will put in. When I put in this shortcut slash biz at the bottom of my description, all of these words will come up. And this just makes it easier and faster so that you don't have to type in the same things over and over. When I get to the listing part of this tutorial, you will see better how these shortcuts work, but I also do have a tutorial all about text plays that I will link in the description as well. Another super useful app that I use to create my listings is Google Lens. Google Lens is an image recognition software or an app if you want to use it on your phone. And it's like doing a Google search, but instead of using words, you will use a picture instead. For example, if I go here to Poshmark and I right click on this image, I can click on search image with Google Lens. Google Lens will then scour the internet for anything that looks like this picture and it will show me listing prices, it will show me style names. So that's what it's helpful for, to find exact style names if you don't know it or if the item doesn't have it on the tags and just to learn more info about the item. And the last window or application that I have open is my file explorer that's down here. I connect my phone to my my computer via a USB cord and then my phone and all of the pictures in it will show up here right on my computer so I'll just click on that and then my files will show up here I will just continue to click until I get to my camera row I keep my photos in my phone organized into different folders the pictures that I need to list my items I keep under this camera folder so I'll just click and hold this folder and then drag it over to download. And what this is going to do is move all of the pictures that are in this camera folder over to my downloads. So the pictures will live on my actual computer now. Now if I click into downloads, here will be this camera folder. Today I only have six items to list. But normally I have about 30 to 40 items at a time that I will be listing over several days. So moving my camera folder from my phone over to my downloads folder right on my computer makes it easier so that I don't have to connect my phone every time I want to list. This folder will be here for me until I am done listing this batch of photos. Now let's get to work. We're going to actually create a listing. First, I'm just going to move some of these windows around so that they're easier to get to as I'm doing my listings. So I will minimize this file folder here and just make some adjustments. I scoot this menu over because I don't really need it. I'm going to X out of text place because again, I don't need the dashboard open. 
I'm going to click on add new listing here on list perfectly and the first thing I will do is move over all of the pictures for the first item I will be listing. So I'll just left click my mouse, hold and highlight all of the pictures that I need and just drag and drop over on list perfectly. I upload all of the pictures except this one where I have the item on the scale. I have this here because I do need this information when I list on Macari and on eBay. I just don't add it to my photos here. I used to, but then I have to worry about having a neat background with it and like this, it doesn't matter. What I did move over was a picture of the item from every angle. I have a picture of measurements when needed. And I also have a picture that has a crisp white background that I will use as my cover photo. I create these crisp white background edited images on my phone using an app called Photo Room, which actually the List Perfectly software does have it integrated right here. If you click on this pencil icon, you can click here on Remove Background and then this green button down here and then that will remove the background for you, leaving you that white background that makes it bright and pop when you list it on your platforms. However, I find that it is a lot faster using the app on my phone, so that's why I do it that way, but you do have this option here on List Perfectly. From here, I will rearrange my photos so that they make sense. These two pictures are basically the same, so I'm just going to click and hold the second one and move it to the very end. From there, I'll just make sure everything looks nice and is set to go. One thing that I do keep in mind is that Mercari and eBay only accept 12 photos, whereas Poshmark accepts 16. The way I have my List Perfectly window set up, each row has four pictures, so I know that the first three rows should have the most important pictures to make sure that they get onto Mercari and eBay. So I'll move photos around if necessary so that that is the case. Another thing you can do here on this perfectly is edit your picture. So again, if you click this pencil icon, you can tune your picture by cropping it, adjusting the brightness, and even adding some contrast as well. Normally, I don't need to do that, but every once in a while, a picture will turn out too dark, and I will go ahead and edit it here on this perfectly. Once the pictures are all set up and good to go, I will come up here and select a template. And these are templates that I created here on this perfectly from scratch. Once you create them once, they will be available for you in this drop down menu. So for these boots, I'm going to use this first template called ankle mid calf boots. And then that will pre fill some of the fields for me. It will give me a short title. It will give me a half done description and under seller notes is where I put the weight of my item so that it's always available for me in the future if I need to relist an item that information will always be there. So let's scroll back up and start filling in these blanks. For titles I've been using the following format. I have the brand name, the style name, a short descriptor, the color of the item, the material, another short descriptor, and then gender and size. Roughly, that's how I've been structuring my titles, but I do change it around if needed. So using that format, I will start filling in the title for these boots. They are Sorel, and I can click here on this picture to see if it has the style name. I don't see one, so I'll leave it like that for now, but they are mid-calf boots. I'll go ahead and add the word lace up here lace up mid calf boots they are white leather they have studs around the trim here so i'll go ahead and add that as a short descriptor and they are women's size 7. the max characters on the three platforms that i list on are 80. so far i've only used 63. i do try to use up as many as i can so if i have some left I will try to add more keywords in there or more descriptions. So I will go ahead and add the words combat and boot. So that way we have boots and the word boot without an S as well. You never know how people will be searching for an item. So I like to add as many variances of a word as I can. The next thing I'll do is highlight the word Sorel. So the brand name, just click copy on my keyboard 
and paste it down here. And I move on to create another title down here in my description. And I just use this as another opportunity to add even more keywords that I didn't get to add up here on the title. Here on the side of the boot, it does say waterproof, so I can go ahead and add that here. And I'm just going to add the word trendy short booties. And later when I move on to doing my research on Poshmark, I may come across other keywords that I can add to the title or to this title description that I have down here as well. The next thing is to click tab on my keyboard so that it moves my cursor over to the brand name here. And all I have to do is click Control V on my keyboard. Since I copied it earlier from the title, it is still on my clipboard and I can just paste it here. Clicking tab again so that it moves me to the color. And I just put one color, the primary color of the item. Some platforms do allow you to add two colors instead of one, but I worry about that later. Clicking tab again, I don't worry about adding the material here because I put it here in the description. And for the size, again, we're putting seven. Now let's move on to filling in the blanks that are in this description. For example, here after women's size, there is a blank that I need to fill in. So these are size seven. And if the item says something about the width, I will add that as well. However, these don't, so I'll leave it as is. After that, I have C pictures for measurements. Down here, I will describe the color. So they are white with black midsole and shoelaces. The heel is a short square heel, so I will add that here. And they are a lace-up closure. We have to describe what the toe looks like, and it is just a round toe. Next, I have a blank in front of the word strap. I have this here in case the boots have a buckle strap or a hook, hook and loop strap or something like that. But since these boots don't have either, I'll just delete this word. For detail, I would put in studying detail. The upper material of these boots is leather. I have a shortcut on text blaze where I put slash A-L and that will bring up these words, 100% authentic leather upper material. Then we'll fill in the style number if the item has one. For now, I will go with this one here. That looks more like a style number to me than the others. But again, once I do my research, I will figure out all of this information. For now, the main goal is to get as much of the listing done so that I don't have to do so much research after. Next, we get to the condition. This is the pre-filled text I have. Gently used, good condition, no flaws. However, if the item does have flaws, I'll go ahead and edit this. And that is the case with these boots. They do have a little bit of scuffing in the front and they have some black marks as well. So I'll go ahead and add that here. I'll delete good condition and just input has some scuffs and marks. Another shortcut I have in text plays is shown in picture. So if I put slash SIP, that will bring up that text for me. And then under no flaws, I'll just put no major flaws because it does have some, but they're minor. And the last thing I have to do is fill in my style tags which for these boots, I don't have a specific one. So I'll just go ahead and put my minimalist tag by clicking the slash M-I-N-I. -I. And then that will bring up all of these tags that relate to minimalist. If all of these apply, I will leave them as is. But if one of these doesn't make sense for these boots, I just delete it. Like French, classy, those two, I don't really think they apply that much. So I'll delete those. Now that my listing is pretty much done, I will start doing some research to see what my price will be for these boots. But also, I want to see what other people are saying about them. Are these boots rare? Have they been worn by a celebrity? And also just to see if there are some important keywords that I missed. I start with the easiest option first, which is to look the item up right here on Poshmark using my title and description that I created. So I will take these words, Sorel Waterproof, copy them and paste them on the Poshmark search bar. I will also take these words, white leather studded combat boot, 
and paste them here on Poshmark as well. And the reason I do this is because the shorter your title when you're searching on Poshmark, the better results you will get. If I were to put this whole title here on Poshmark, it would not know what I was talking about. It would bring up random results. Once I have that copied over, I would just click this red button so that it can search for them. And that was easy. It brought up the exact boots that I need, but it's not always this easy. And that's when I will move on to my Google Lens app to do the research, but no need to do that here. The first thing I'm taking note of is how many are listed. So using the keywords that I put here, there are only two listed. I also wanna take note of what they are listing them for. So we have one at 139 and 135, but they're both new with tags, mine aren't. Those are all things that I wanna take into account so that I can come up with a listing price. I obviously cannot list mine for anywhere near this because mines are used and they have some flaws. But I will go ahead and open one of these up in a new tab so that I can look into it later. For now, I want to scroll down here on the filters and click on the sold items filter. So the previous window showed us how much the boots are listed for, but these search results are going to tell us how much they have actually sold for and also how many of them have sold. So there are so many that have sold and only a few are listed. That means that there is a high demand for these boots. All of that I'm taking into account when coming up with a listing price. So scrolling through here, I want to find the ones that are used. I don't wanna look at the ones that are new with tags, just so that I get a better idea of how much they're worth when they're used. I see two here that aren't marked new with tags. So I'm going to open these up in a new tab. Now I'm going to be clicking into each of these tabs that I opened and just looking into it a little further. First, I see that they are called the Lennox boot. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into my title down here because it wouldn't fit in my title up here. I'm going to copy this stud keyword and put it right in front of booties. I have studded up here, but it wouldn't hurt to add just the word stud. There's another keyword that I did not use in my description, full grain. So I'll put it here in front of authentic. Lightly cushioned footbed is something I can also add to my description. So I'll just copy and paste it here. And then this descriptor, durable rubber outsole for traction, I will also add it to my description. The MSRP, I can also add to my listing, which that will go under keywords and pricing. Moving on to the next one. These are the ones that were used. Hers also have a couple very light marks but they were barely worn. Mine are a little more worn than hers, so I think I will have to ask for a little bit below 120. Let's move on to the last one. Hers are a nine out of 10 condition. She got 100 for hers and it was in August, so not that long ago. But again, mine have a lot more wear than hers, so I think I will ask for a little less than 100 as well. So after seeing the listed price for these boots and the sold price, after reviewing these listings here, I think I'm going to shoot for anywhere from 70 to $78 for these boots. However, most of the time, people are not gonna buy things for your listed price. Most things sell because you send out offers or someone sends you an offer. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and list these boots for $85 and hopefully get about 70 or a little below. You know what, I'm going to shoot for 87 just to give me a little more wiggle room. As I was creating this listing, I started to think of more keywords that could apply to these boots. So I'm going to go ahead and add them here. And that is the word moto, motorcycle, edgy, goth, and punk. The next thing I'll do is copy the first three keywords and paste them down here under keywords and tags. I have my MSRP price done, my listing price done, and for my SKU number, I will click on my pictures down here, click on the photo that has the scale and the item on it, and here on the side, it has the SKU. I didn't do a good job of taking this picture because I could hardly see what that says, but I'm going to move this over to enlarge it, and I see that it says B139. 
And I will also add my weight down here under seller notes. So this here says two pounds, 1.7 ounces, but you always want to round up. So let's say this says two pounds and two ounces, but I know that I have to add at least seven to eight ounces to account for a box large enough to fit these boots. So with that in mind, the new weight becomes two pounds and 10 ounces. Now we'll just slowly scroll up, just look over everything, make sure all my blanks are filled in, everything is good to go and correct. And if so, I just click here on this baby blue button that says save and new, and we move on to our next listing. Let's go ahead and list one more item just so we can see the whole process one more time. I'm selecting all of these pictures from the next item. Click and hold, drag over to list perfectly. For these, I'm going to use the template sneakers. And let's go ahead and arrange our photos here so that the first 12 are the most important ones. Next, let's go ahead and fill out our title and description. I used the word sneakers here in the beginning of the title and then shoes towards the end because again, I wanna add as many variances of a keyword as possible. Highlighting the word Nike so that I can paste it in my description. I'll go ahead and create another short title, clicking tab so that I can move on to the brand and pasting Nike again. And the main color I'm going to go with is black. And these are size seven and a half. Here on my description, I'll go ahead and fill in these blanks. Sometimes when I fill in the rest of my description, I will start to think of other keywords that I can add to my top description and to this bottom description. For example, the low top shaft, just not something I thought about before, but now I can go ahead and put this in front of shoes, the words low top. Another thing I can put in here is the year that these were made, just because these are some desirable old school Nike shoes. So I'm going to go ahead and put the keyword 2012 in front of Nike. And for the style tags, I think I will put the word active. And that will bring up a lot of words that relate to sports and workout, running, gym, things like that. And I'll just delete the ones that I think definitely do not apply to these shoes. And add some more that come to mind, like the word old school street style and i will also add in the word nike shocks with the cks at the end because nike does spell it with an x as it says here on the side of the shoe but maybe someone will look them up with the word spelled this way instead so that is the title and description mostly filled out now we're moving on to the research part so i will x out of these tabs that i had opened previously and i'm going to search for nike vintage 2012 go ahead and add that here to the search bar on poshmark i'm going to copy this style name and then just add the word shoes at the end. So it is showing me lots of random items like plushies and girl shoes and boy shoes all mixed in here. I'm going to click women under categories. I'm going to select the color black and the color pink just so that I get more precise results and I can do better research. They're listed for 30, 45, 25, 99. And here are some that are exactly like mine. The MSRP on these are listed as 200 and they're listed for 110. I'm going to open this in a new tab. So what I've gathered from this information so far is that some are listed on the very low end of about 40 to $30. The ones that look exactly like mine are listed for 110 and they're size eight and a half. Sometimes sizing does play a role into how you will be pricing your item. Sometimes the larger the size, the more you can ask in your listing price. But let's go ahead and click on this sold filter here to see what's going on there. Sometimes in the sold prices, you will see some that are super low. Those I ignore because most of the time they aren't resellers thinking about making a profit. They just want to get rid of their items in their home. So I see the rest have sold for 40, 45, some all the way up to 85, 
We have a 40 here, 50. So seeing all that so far, I cannot justify listing mines like this other seller has right here for $110. What I am going to do is copy this Wolf Gray Black Fireberry and input it into my title here after Vintage 2012. I'm going to copy this title and paste it into eBay and see what they have to say over there. So now with that exact title and the exact colorways, I can find the exact item that I have better here on eBay. I always click on buy it now so that it doesn't show me shoes that are up for auction. I only want to see the ones that are for sale, not for auction. We have a 90, 85. This one's with free shipping. This one you're paying for shipping. 65, 130. Let's go ahead and click on sold. I don't see any that have sold so far. So with all this information that I have gathered thus far, and being that my item does have a bit of wear and some marks here and there, I'm going to shoe for about $65 to $70 for these shoes. But again, I don't list it for the price that I want to get for them. I try to add a little more to that to make room for offers and discounts. So with that said, I'm going to list these at $82. I'll go ahead and grab three keywords because that's the max you can add on Mercari and Poshmark and I'll add them down here. For the MSRP, I'm going to go with 200, which is what this guy has it as here. And for my SKU number, I'm going to pull up my pictures, scroll to the weight of the item, and it's D241. The weight is one pound, and rounding up, it's nine ounces. To that, I will add about seven ounces to account for the box that I will be shipping this in, and that is my listing complete. I'm just scrolling up to make sure everything's good to go, and usually I will click Save and New, but since we're done for now, I'm going to click on Save and Exit to Catalog. So with these two listings that we did together, there was quite a bit of research involved just because I've never listed either of these type of shoes. But normally I'm buying pretty similar things like retro dress shoes, the Clarks, the Bourne. And with those, I don't do this much research. I know what those items should be listed at. I know what kind of keywords and descriptions to use. So don't think that you always have to do deep research. If you're selling the same type of items, it all gets to be faster and faster. Before I move on to the cross-listing portion, I do like to add the items that I listed on List Perfectly over to my inventory spreadsheet. So to do that, I am first going to X out of these tabs and go ahead and open my Google Sheets spreadsheet. I add all of my items that I have listed here under inventory. Now just scroll all the way to the bottom till we get to a blank spot. Then I will copy the listing SKU and the title and paste it here on this Google Sheet. Then I will do the same with the next one. And then I will fill in these next three columns here, which is COG, that stands for cost of goods, date listed, and price listed. So the cost of goods for these two is the same as the ones above because they are all from the same thrift trip. I will take how much I paid for an entire day's worth of sourcing, divide it by the number of items I got that day, and I will use that as my cost of goods. To me, it all balances out in the end. It may look like I made a little bit of money for items that I paid a dollar to two dollars for, but it will be made up for the items that sell for 80, 100 or more. So that's why I just keep it simple and do average cost of goods. So I copied this 806 and I will paste it into these next two here. The date for today is 9-15-22. So I will add it there and then just copy it to the rest of the listings. And then I'll just fill in the listing price and let me just show you real quick why it's important for me to also copy over the SKU number. Here is something that sold this morning, I believe. If I click into it, here is the SKU number. I will just copy this and then I can go back to my spreadsheet, click Control F on my keyboard. That will bring up this find search bar. 
I will paste the SKU number that I just copied from Poshmark, and here are these sandals. So since these sandals sold on Sunday, when I track all of my sales, all I have to do is cut this listing from this page and move it over to the month that it sold on, which is September. That is the reasoning why I copy over the SKU number along with the title. But for now, I am done with this spreadsheet, so I will just X out of that. I am also done using Poshmark, and I will just maximize this window to show you how I get to cross-listing. The first thing is to click this Start Selecting green arrow here and I will select all the listings that I want to cross list. The ones that are empty under these platforms columns are the ones that are new that I have not listed yet. The ones that have the platforms next to it means that they have been cross listed and then once it sells, it'll say sold and the platform that it's sold on. Once you select the ones you do wanna cross list, you'll click these arrows again. These are all the platforms that you can list to from list perfectly. I only sell on eBay, Mercari, and Poshmark, so those are the ones I will select. And then I will click this green button that says copy. Then all of these tabs will start to open. For each listing, it will be three tabs, one for each platform. What this perfectly did for me here is copied over all of my pictures, my title and my description. Using all of that information, it pre-filled some of the options down here for me, but some of these fields are left blank. So now my job will be to go and verify that all of these fields that list perfectly pre-selected for me are correct and then fill in the ones that are left blank. And to make this easier, I'm going to go back to my side-by-side -side view again. So I'm going to click these two little squares here at the top right, click and hold the list perfectly tab and then scoot it over on this side. I will click this X and I will pull up my pictures down here as well. So now I have list perfectly with the title, the price, the weight, and my pictures down here and now I'm able to use this left screen as a cheat sheet as I'm finalizing and verifying all the information on these platforms on the right side. Starting with Mercari, I see that my title and my description copied over perfectly. I am satisfied with the category that they chose for me and a lot of the time it does choose the right category but from time to time I do have to come in here and make a few changes. The brand is correct as well and for material I'm just going to select fabric. The end use I am going to go ahead and go with running. They are low top for the style. And then for the condition I'll go ahead and click on good. The color, the size is correct. And then when we come to the delivery method, it always chooses the recommended, which is Mercari Local and shipping. And here at the top, these first two options explains to you what each of those are. I just leave it as is with Mercari Local. For the shipping option, it chose FedEx, $7.99 up to two pounds. I have the Macari shipping prices memorized, so I know that this is correct, so I will leave it as is. But it's not always correct. Basically, it just uses the information from above, the category, title, description, and everything to choose your shipping option. Sometimes it does get it wrong, so I will have to click into here, click on Select Carrier, and choose the correct option. I have a Macari shipping video where I show a chart to help you decide which shipping option to go with depending on the weight of your item and depending on which shipping carrier you want to use. Lastly, we get to the pricing portion. I leave my price pretty much the same across all platforms, but on Mercari, sometimes I will add a few extra dollars to my pricing, and that is because I turn on smart pricing. So my price will slowly, over time, drop from $82 to $65. So that's why I'm not afraid to add a few extra dollars sometimes if I'm not sure of my pricing, because it will continue to drop anyway if it doesn't end up selling for this set price up here. And if you wanted to, you can always edit your minimum price as 
as well. Just like I've been saying with your listing price, you always want to leave room for offers. The same goes with your minimum price because when your item reaches this minimum price, someone may still send you an offer. So you also wanna leave room for offers here. Add a few extra dollars if you want to here as well. But for this particular item, I am okay with the pricing. And for this minimum price, I'm just going to lower it one extra dollar. And that is it for Mercari. I'll go ahead and click list and move on to the next tab, which will be Poshmark. And again, just scrolling through here, making sure that the pre-filled information is correct and filling in anything that's missing. For Poshmark, it never chooses your category, so I'd have to go in there and choose it. These are women's shoes and they are sneakers. Quantity, size, everything is good. This is not new with the tags. And for Poshmark, you are able to choose two colors, so I'll go ahead and choose one more. I'm going to go with the gray one since it's the second most prominent color on these shoes. Everything else has been copied over nicely, and I'll just click Next and List Item. My computer was experiencing some issues, so I closed everything down and then uploaded it again. This normally doesn't happen, but I think it's because I have the screen recorder in the background and that takes up a lot of RAM power. But now we're back up and running. We're here on eBay with the Nike Shocks. Here is my title and my SKU number that copied over. I always make sure to look into the category to make sure they got it correct. And if I do need to edit this, I can just click this pencil option at the right here. The brand and the size is correct as well. Everything else looks good here. For the style code, I can just click on this picture, find it here and type it in real quick. If the tag on the shoe or the clothing item does have the sizing for different countries, then I'll go ahead and input it here. If it doesn't, I just don't worry about it. But since this one has it, I'll go ahead and choose five for UK. For the theme, I'm going to put in sports, outdoor, classic, and retro. For the upper material, I am just going to go with mesh. And for features, I'll put in these frequently selected ones, which is comfort and cushioned. And I'll just scroll through here to see if there is anything else that applies to these shoes. They are low top and for activity, again, I'll scroll through here and just choose anything that I feel applies. For accents, I don't think these shoes have anything other than logo. The EU sizing is 38.5 as it says here. It doesn't say anything about the width on this tag, so I will just leave that blank. Lace up closure is correct and I will put in solid for the pattern. All of this other stuff I will just ignore. For occasion, it has casual pre-selected for me. I'll go ahead and also select activewear. And that is normally where I will stop, but sometimes if the item has a bunch of things going for it and I want to look into more options to select in the eBay fields, I will click the show, show more link. For season, I will just go ahead and select all that apply. Next is condition. These are pre-owned. And here you can add a short description of your pre-owned item. And actually, I forgot to describe the paint spots and marks that it has on the right shoe. So I'm going, going to go ahead and add that here under condition in my description. So this is what I have. Gently used, the right shoe has some paint marks, has normal wear, and it's shown in pictures. So I will just highlight this portion here copy it and paste it into my condition description here on eBay. I will leave this blank if there's no notable flaws to mention, but when there are flaws on the item that I expanded on in my regular description down here, I will also add it to the description here on eBay. And once I'm done with this tutorial, I will make sure to go back to my listings on Poshmark and Mercari that I created for these shoes and add this same thing under the description since I forgot earlier. Now we're on pricing. Sometimes it will add it for me. It just depends. eBay does a lot of updates, so List Perfectly does its best to update their software when eBay or other platforms do to make sure as much information transfers over, but sometimes it takes List Perfectly a little bit to catch up. So as of lately, it has not been adding the price, 
but it's not a big deal because I can see right here that I listed it for 82 and I'll just input that here. Next we get to shipping. I always choose this flat rate option and just like on Mercari, I know my eBay shipping prices so I can just come over here on list perfectly, see how much this item weighs and kind of come up with a rough estimate of how much it's going to cost to ship these shoes. I think it's going to cost anywhere from 10 to $11. So I'm going to go with a $10.99 shipping price. Sometimes I may be off by a few dollars, sometimes I'm a little bit over, but in the end, it all evens out and I don't end up losing money because of my shipping prices. I also have an eBay shipping video where I explain all of the options and prices I will link that down in the description. For international shipping, I always turn that on. All of this is already pre-selected. Handling time is pre-selected. And the last thing I will do is just turn on promoted listings. Right now I'm listing all of my items at 4%, so I'll go ahead and enter that there. And that is all for my eBay listing. I'll go ahead and click this blue listed button and move on to the next item, which was the Sorel boots. Title description look okay. The category is okay. For some reason, it added Harley Davidson as the brand, but it has Sorel down here as the suggested. So I'll go ahead and click on that. The shaft is mid calf. And use, I will put every day. And for the heel height, I can just come over here to my pictures, look at my measurements, and it is between one and two inches. So that is the option I will select. These are in good condition. They're white size seven. And for the shipping, here on List Perfectly, I can see that I have it at two pounds and 10 ounces. So FedEx 7.99 up to three pounds is the correct option. I'll leave that as is. For the pricing, I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to $90. A 72 minimum price feels like an okay deal for me. So I'll leave that and click list. Moving on to Poshmark. I'll select the category women's shoes and I'm going with combat and moto boots here for the colors I'm choosing white and black and this one is done as well lastly we have this one here on eBay title skew everything is filled in women's shoes and boots that is correct I spelled white wrong so it didn't select the correct option for me here so I'm going to go ahead and select it myself right here. I will click on this tag here to check out the other sizings. For UK, it is a size five. For theme, I'm going to put outdoor, punk, motorcycle. And remember the heel height was between one to two inches. So I'll go with this option low. For occasion, I'm going with casual. This is a round toe boot. The EU sizing I can see here is 38. And for the model, it put it as Sorel lace up, but that is obviously not correct. I'm going to go ahead and copy this from my description and paste it here under model solid for the pattern accents it pre-selected studded for me just looking to see if there's anything else i can add and i'll just scroll through the features to see what i can add here and this time i'm not going to click into show more i'll just leave it as is it is pre-owned and i'll go ahead and copy the condition description and paste it here my pricing is 87 and for these boots, I'm going to change my flat rate shipping cost to $11.99. And the last thing would be to turn on promoted listings and change it to 4% and list my item. When I'm done listing, I will go back through each of these tabs to make sure everything turned out okay. This one's good to go and it leaves a message here saying it has successfully been added to my list perfectly catalog as well. So just clicking X out of all this, if everything's good to go. Then I will also go into my pictures and delete the ones that I just listed. So I'll delete these first two. So that next time I come to list, I know that I can start here. It took a lot of refining, but that's where I'm at with my listing process. As I have done from watching other resellers share their listing process, from here I want you to pick and choose what works for you, take the tips and methods and customize them to fit your needs. If you found value in this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up down below and that's all for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.